Welcome to the jungle of nutrition and weight loss in 2024. It's a world where every diet claims to be the golden ticket to a slimmer waistline and better health. But amidst the chaos of conflicting advice, how do we separate fact from fiction? With debates over carbs, fats and fasting resembling more like fiery religious debates than scientific discussion, it's no wonder we are more lost in the maze of misinformation than ever before. From the low-carb craze to the fasting kingdom, everyone seemed to have their own idea of the perfect diet. But which one truly reigns supreme for weight loss? Stick around until the end because the verdict will surprise you. Hello my dears and welcome. I'm Marina, a registered dietitian and I'm thrilled to be your guide on your weight loss journey. Today we are exploring four most popular diets for weight loss aiming to find the real winners. But before we dive into each diet specifics we need to establish the foundation. How weight loss really happens. The foundation. How weight loss happens. All paths to weight loss share a common foundation, the creation of a calorie deficit. Whether we are consciously counting calories or not, every diet achieves this deficit in its own way. Some diets exclude entire macronutrient groups, while others rely on specific lists of prohibited foods. Regardless of the method, the principle remains unchanged. Consuming fewer calories than the body needs leads to weight loss. Let me explain further. The food we eat provides the body with energy measured in calories. On average, women require around 2000 calories per day, while men need about 2500 calories to maintain their weight. When your body needs more calories than it gets from food, that's called a calorie deficit. This deficit prompts the body to tap into its energy reserves, primarily from stored fat, leading to weight loss. And meta-analysis of several diet programs confirms, calorie restriction is the primary driver of weight loss. Simple, but not easy, otherwise I wouldn't be making this video. You see, while the concept of calorie deficit may be straightforward, the challenge lies in finding the approach for achieving this calorie deficit that work best for you. Different diets have different strategies for achieving calorie deficit. Some focus on reducing or eliminating certain macronutrients like carbs or fats, while others emphasize portion control or meal timing. With a sea of weight loss diets to choose from, finding the best one can feel like a finding a needle in a haystack. Unfortunately, even scientific guidance can be ambiguous when it comes to determining the most effective approach. Organizations like the American Heart Association and the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence offer general recommendations favoring diets rich in vegetable, fruits, legumes, nuts, whole grains and fish. Nietzsche specifically advocates for a Mediterranean-style diet to combat obesity and reduce cardiovascular risk. However, the exact makeup of these diets remains undefined. Now, let's explore four of the most popular weight loss diets. Low-fat diet Low-fat diets have long been regarded as a cornerstone of weight loss intervention. Reducing fat intake is believed to lower overall calorie consumptions and aid to weight loss. This approach is based on a logic. Fat, with its 9 calories per gram, is the most energy-dense macronutrient, while carbohydrates, with only 4 calories per gram, are less calorie-dense and have a stronger effect on satiety. Typically, a low-fat diet involves consuming a reduced amount of fat, ranging from very low, where less than 10% of daily calories are derived from fat, to a more moderate composition, where fat contributes less than or equal to 30% of total daily energy needs. 
This moderate fat intake aligns with current global health authority recommendations such as the World Health Organization, which additionally emphasizes the importance of limiting saturated fat to no more than 10% of total daily calorie intake. Amidst the global rise in obesity rates, questions have been raised regarding the efficiency of dietary guidelines. Skeptics argue that those recommendations, particularly those advocating for reduced fat intake and increased consumption of complex carbohydrates, may have contributed to the obesity epidemic. However, the Women's Health Initiative Dietary Modification Trial, which followed almost 50,000 women over a period of seven years, found that weight loss was greatest among the women who decreased their percentage of energy from fat despite eating diet rich in complex carbohydrates. Additionally, landmark studies like the Finnish Diabetes Prevention Study and the Diabetes Prevention Program have demonstrated the benefits of modest weight loss through low-fat diets and calorie restriction in reducing the incidence of type 2 diabetes. Researchers suggest that a low-fat diet approach is both acceptable and effective offering significant benefits for weight management and metabolic health. In recent years, low-fat diets have lost popularity while low-carb diets have gained traction, leading to extensive comparison between the two approaches. A meta-analysis conducted by Nordman and colleagues found that low-carb diets typically yield better weight loss outcomes at six months compared to low-fat diets. However, this initial discrepancy diminishes by the 12-month mark. Similarly, a systematic review by Hassan and colleagues examined low-carb versus low-fat and higher-carb diets and revealed that low-carb diets, particularly when combined with high-protein intake, are more effective for weight loss at six months. They proved that low-carb and low-fat diets are equally effective in reducing weight and cardiovascular disease risk up to one year. And although the lower-carb diets outperform low-fat diets by the six-month mark, they found no significant differences between the diets in the long term. In conclusion, the evidence suggests that low-fat, calorie-restricted diet can indeed be a valuable strategy for weight loss. A low-fat diet may be suitable for individuals who are at risk or do already have cardiovascular disease, as reducing dietary fat intake has been associated with improvements in LDL cholesterol levels and heart health. Additionally, those with a history of gallbladder issues or pancreatitis may benefit from a low-fat approach to minimize symptoms and promote digestive health. However, it's essential to note that not all fats are created equal and certain types of fats, such as unsaturated fats found in foods like nuts, seeds, olive oil, fatty fish and avocados, are considered heart healthy and should be included in moderation. To adopt a low-fat diet approach, prioritize consuming plenty of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean proteins such as poultry and fish, legumes, and low-fat dairy products. It's important to limit or avoid high-fat foods like fried and junk foods, ultra-processed sweets and salty snacks, fatty cuts of meat, full-fat dairy, and other foods containing fats such as ice creams, cakes, etc. By focusing on nutrient-dense, lower-fat foods, individuals can lower their overall calorie intake, promote weight loss, and enhance cardiovascular health. As with any dietary approach, it's important to consult with a healthcare professional or registered dietitian to ensure that individual nutrient needs are met and that the diet is sustainable and balanced for long-term health. Low-carb, high-fat diet. 
In recent years, carbohydrate-restricted diets have gained popularity not only for weight reduction but also for managing type 2 diabetes. The low-carb, high-fat diet is a broad term encompassing diets with reduced carbohydrates and increased fat intake, including variations like Atkins, Eddy's, Zone and South Beach diets. This contrasts sharply with the long-standing low-fat dietary guidelines that dominated clinical practice recommendation in the U.S. since the 1970s until recently. Healthy adults are typically advised to consume carbohydrates within a range of 45-65% to 65 of their total daily energy intake. However, a low-carb diet involves consuming carbohydrates below this recommended lower boundary, typically compromising 10-45% to 45 of total daily energy intake from carbs or between 50 to 130 grams of carbs per day. When carbohydrate intake drops below 10% or falls below 20 to 50 grams per day, the body enters a state of nutritional ketosis, resulting in what is known as a ketogenic diet. This extreme form of low-carb dieting warrants its own focus and attention. Adherence to strict macronutrient percentages isn't necessary. The emphasis lies in embracing a sustainable lifestyle shift. Carbohydrate intake on this diet can fluctuate greatly, ranging from 50 grams to as high as 130 grams per day. Even those consuming over 100 grams of carbs daily can stick to the diet's principles, customizing it to fit personal needs and preferences. The flexibility of the low-carb, high-fat approach allows for adaptation to different dietary requirements and goals. As we observed previously, the scientific community is revising low-carb diets to determine their effectiveness. A meta-analysis by Chala and colleagues revealed that low-carbohydrate diets were effective for promoting weight loss, increasing HDL cholesterol, and reducing triglycerides in the short term compared to other diets. However, it's important to consider the potential drawbacks of high-fat diets as they may lead to dyslipidemia, characterized by elevated LDL and total cholesterol levels over the long term for certain individuals and particularly for those with a familiar history of lipid disease. Therefore, it's really important to consider baseline lipid levels and familiar history when contemplating a high-fat, low-carb diet approach. The low-carbohydrate diet has shown benefits such as increased insulin sensitivity and lower insulin levels, decreased hunger hormones and increased energy expenditure during weight loss. Another comparison of low-carb, high-fat diet to low-fat diet observed higher levels of weight loss for up to one year for our low-carb diet and improved lipid profile of HDL cholesterol and triglycerides, but less favorable changes in LDL and total cholesterol levels. Research also suggests that the low-carb diet is at least as effective as the low-fat diet up to 6 months and slightly better at 12 months for weight loss. However, at the 2-year mark, the effect of weight loss and improvement of metabolic risk factors were at least the same in low-carb and low-fat diets. The biggest challenge between the low-carb or low-fat diet and in weight loss overall is adherence. People tend to become less consistent with the diet over time and weight regain is unfortunately common with both approaches. A low-carb diet may be suitable for individuals looking to lose weight, manage blood sugar levels or improve metabolic health. By reducing carbohydrate intake, particularly refined carbohydrates and sugars, low-carb diets 
can help stabilize blood sugar levels and reduce insulin resistance, making them particularly beneficial for individuals with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes or even metabolic syndrome. They also have been associated with improvements in cardiovascular risk factors such as triglycerides, HDL cholesterol and blood pressure. However, they may not be appropriate for individuals with high LDL base levels and those who are hypersensitive to dietary cholesterol or have history of familiar hypercholesterolomania. Additionally, individuals with certain medical condition or dietary restriction should consult with a healthcare professional or registered dietitian before starting a low carb diet to ensure it's safe and appropriate. As with any dietary approach, the key to success is balance, variety and individualization based on specific health goals and preferences. To follow a low-carb, high-fat diet, focus on reducing your intake of carbohydrates while increasing your consumption of hard, healthy fat. It is important to moderate saturated fat intake and prioritize unsaturated fats from food sources like oily fish, olive oil, nuts, seeds and avocado. Also include full-fat dairy products for a less strict version of the diet, as well as eggs and meat. Be mindful of your carbohydrate intake and aim to limit high-carb foods like grains, legumes, starchy vegetables, and even starchy fruits for stricter versions of the diet. Instead, prioritize non-starchy vegetables, fruits with lower carb content such as berries, protein foods and unsaturated fats to support your dietary goals. It is of course important to listen to your body and adjust your fat intake based on your individual needs and preferences. Intermittent fasting. Fasting has been around for thousands of years. Initially arising from periods of food scarcity, it evolved into a deliberate practice found in various religious and cultural traditions worldwide. Today, beyond its religious roots, fasting has received attention for its potential health benefits, attracting interest from both medical experts and general public. Modern variations of fasting, such as intermittent fasting, have emerged, deviating from traditional prolonged abstentions from food. Intermittent fasting involves alternating between eating and fasting periods, focusing on when you eat rather than specific food choices. It's not a conventional diet with prescribed foods to eat or avoid, but more of an eating pattern. The three most common regimens include alternate day fasting, 5-2 intermittent fasting and daily time-restricted feeding with the 16-8 method being the most popular among them. As a weight loss strategy, intermittent fasting has gained popularity for allowing individuals to experience the benefits of calorie deficit without continuous restriction. Some find it easier to adhere to intermittent diets as they allow for periods of break from dieting, which has contributed to their popularity as a weight loss strategy. Let's look at the 16-8 method, which is the most popular one. 16-8 method is a time-restricted feeding protocol that promotes eating all food within a set window of time, such as from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. By compressing the eating period, individuals may naturally reduce calorie intake, but effectiveness hinges on avoiding overeating during the eating window. So it's still essential to maintain a balanced and calorie deficient diet, as the 16-8 method is simply a tool for helping with calorie deficit rather than a magical solution. Recent reviews suggest that intermittent fasting could benefit patients with obesity and yield effects comparable to regular daily calorie restriction. However, its long-term sustainability and health effects are still not fully understood. 
while intermittent fasting can be a useful tool for achieving a calorie deficit, it may not suit everyone. Individuals who prefer regular meals, especially breakfast, may find it less suitable. It's also crucial for individuals on hypoglycemic medication to exercise caution due to potential adverse effects such as dizziness, weakness, headache, and lack of concentration. Although serious adverse events are really rare. Transitioning to another perspective. If you are following the 16-8 method by skipping breakfast and consuming all your meals later in the day or even at night, it might be worth reconsidering the schedule. Aligning your food intake with your body circadian rhythms may offer notable health benefits. Consuming more calories earlier in the day has been linked to potential support for weight management and metabolic health. Eating late at night can disrupt circadian rhythms and has been associated with increased risk of obesity and metabolic syndrome. A recent review has highlighted the connection between skipping breakfast and increased risk of overweight and obesity. Similarly, the American Heart Association recommends spreading calorie intake over a defined period, emphasizing early consumption and maintaining consistent overnight fasting periods. Ultimately, intermittent fasting should be approached with consideration of individual preferences and lifestyle factors. But many people try intermittent fasting not just for weight loss, but also for its perceived health benefits. Supporters of intermittent fasting believe it enhances metabolic health, boosts fat burning, and supports cellular repair processes like autophagy, which could potentially promote longevity. However, it is important to approach these claims with skepticism. While intermittent fasting has its merits, triggering autophagy requires more than just skipping meals. It typically involves caloric restriction to induce an energy deficiency. So while intermittent fasting may offer health benefits, let's keep a critical eye on its true impact. So intermittent fasting can indeed be a useful tool for achieving a calorie deficit, especially for individuals who experience reduced hunger at certain times of the day and prefer simplified meal planning. However, it may not be appropriate for individuals with certain medical conditions or medication requirements, people with history of ED, or those who experience adverse effects such as fatigue or dizziness during fasting periods. Mediterranean diet. The Mediterranean diet is one of the most studied diets in the world. The World Health Organization has defined the Mediterranean diet as an effective nutritional strategy for the prevention and control of non-communable diseases, which are currently the leading cause of premature death in the world. It is associated with lower mortality and morbidity and numerous health benefits and even recognized as a cultural heritage by the UNESCO in 2010. Rooted in the culinary traditions of Mediterranean nations like France, Spain, Greece, and Italy, the diet lacks a strict definition. Rather, it encompasses foods prevalent across the region, constituting a broad general dietary pattern. The Mediterranean diet emphasizes a high intake of vegetables, fruits, legumes, and whole grains. It incorporates moderate servings of fish, poultry, and fermented dairy such as yogurt and kefir. Occasionally, a small portion of red meat or meat products find its way onto the plate. And let's not forget the here and there category where a single glass, and definitely not five, of red wine is enjoyed. This diet highlights the importance of unsaturated fats found in nuts, seeds, and of course, the Mediterranean's golden elixir, olive oil. 
Olive oil is not only used for cooking, but also as a key ingredient in preparing cold dishes. This dietary approach also doesn't outright ban, but rather restricts the quantity and regularity of ultra-processed foods like sugary beverages, candies, salty snacks, industrial baked goods, processed meats and fast food. These items are typically high in calories and indulging in them frequently can contribute to weight gain and obesity. While the cardiovascular, cognitive and overall health benefits of the Mediterranean eating pattern have long been established, its effectiveness for weight loss has only recently gained attention. A systematic review conducted by Mancini and colleagues concluded that the Mediterranean diet resulted in greater weight loss compared to low-fat diets with similar weight loss observed compared to other dietary approaches such as low-carb diets. Furthermore, it improved lipid profile and blood pressure to the same extent or better than other popular diets. Another review by Dino and colleagues found that the Mediterranean diet demonstrated the strongest evidence for weight loss and improvements in cardiometabolic parameters. The Mediterranean diet emphasizes overall health and disease prevention rather than solely focusing on weight loss. It offers a sustainable and balanced eating pattern suited for long-term well-being, making it particularly beneficial for individuals at risk of cardiovascular disease. It's a flexible dietary approach that shows promise for weight loss and health improvements, but reducing energy intake is essential for effective long-term weight management. So, what's the verdict? Are we any less confused now that we learned that the calorie-reducing diets we've discussed today can all lead to weight loss as long as they adhere to? While statistical differences exist between certain diets, they are minor and likely not crucial for many seeking weight loss. Moreover, the growing body of evidence suggests that there's no one-size-fits-all diet for achieving sustained weight loss. In conclusion, people like things to be easy, so we often look for one perfect diet that solves our problems. But unfortunately, it's not that simple. The truth is, there is no one-size-fits-all diet for weight loss. Different diets work for different people and the most important thing is finding one that you can stick to. Whether you're cutting back on fat or carbs, the key to losing weight is eating fewer calories. With obesity rates going up, it's important to find what works best for each person. Rather than seeking the perfect diet, our focus should be on enhancing adherence to whichever plan we choose and can maintain over long term. So, which of these top four weight loss diets do you think would work best for you? Or maybe have you tried one yet? Share your opinions and experiences for other fellow weight loss warriors in the comments below. And thank you for watching, my dears. If you found this video informative, don't forget to hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Stay motivated and dedicated and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!